green hair. A blonde person's literal nightmare when it comes to pools, baths, or tubs of water. This tends to be quite a common problem in the summer times and we often advocate that prevention is better than cure. Whilst there are many, many, many tactics that you can do to actually get rid of this green or color corrected back to your beautiful fresh blonde, today I want to show you how to color correct green out of your blonde hair using ketchup. Today, I'm color correcting my green hair using ketchup. This is Color Theory 101. Over the last few weeks, I was testing out how well this beautiful rainbow patch of hair would fade out, and it's now been around three-ish weeks since I last did it, and it is still so vibrant. As a result, I left the rest of my hair do whatever it wants. And before, the last color that I dyed it was yellow. Hello. I dyed my hair yellow and it has since turned green. Actually, it's, it's sad. I'm a very big green person. I just wasn't expecting chlorine pool water on blonde green. The OGs of this channel are going to know that the best way to fix this particular color combination is first of all, not to panic. Because the second thing that you need to do is instead of grabbing the color stripper, the bleach, or a very harsh stripping shampoo, the first thing we need to grab is our color wheel because it's going to help us very visually understand what's going on. For me, I'm a very big fan of the vivid hair colors and I make it my point to educate you on how to get very vivid groups of color or maybe even a combination of colors. Five items. Why are you five items? Five items? Oh my god, you guys, sorry. <laughs> Jumping in in the middle of this video, someone just made a $965 order on my website. Thank you, Robin. Oh my god. But today, my main goal is actually just to neutralize it. Now, obviously, it's not going to turn white because I have an underlying base color, but somewhere far away from the current green that I occupy will be my end goal. So if this is my end goal, and I know that my hair is currently occupying unwanted green tones, I need to color correct with a product equally vibrant, but on an opposite area of the color wheel. If my hair is green and I want a neutral color, I need to go in with red ketchup red. Initially, I was going to color correct using active coloring agents that I already have. They're specifically made for hair. I'm a very curious person and I'm extremely open-minded and I love the concept of items having multiple uses as well as utilizing science and affordability in any of our transformations. That is where Mr. Tomato Ketchup comes in. It's not orthodox and it's a bit weird, but it's actually super cool. When you go into a pool and you have a freshly colored blonde set, you might notice that it starts to take on a green tinge and it is something that hairstylists actually advocate so much. Do not go into a pool if you have fresh highlight, fresh balayage, or else a full head of blonde. And a lot of people assume that this is because of chlorine, but it's actually not the chlorine that turns your blonde hair green, it is actually the chlorine oxidizing the copper, which is found in most pools, whether freshwater or seawater, which ends up resulting in the classic green color. It is the same when wearing copper jewelry, turning your skin tiny bands of green. This actually happens on every single hair color, it's just that blonde is the most porous normally and it is the lightest base, so it shows up the most on it. So today we're going to see if a $4 bottle of Heinz tomato ketchup can actually tone the hair back to somewhere neutral without breaking the bank and without breaking our hair. Let's do it. Mm. Let's go with Angelica today. I haven't, I haven't given her a bit of a moment in a while. So I have with me here my bowl of tomato ketchup and we're going to see how this is going to work on our porous, currently green-toned blonde hair, mostly on the ends, and definitely over this semi-green look. It's giving old summer and in a bad way. I'm not going to lie to you, I don't actually know what health benefits, if any, this actually gives to the hair. I do know that tomato ketchup 
is an acidic product. Now, that actually isn't bad because our own hair falls mostly on the acidic pH scale rather than on the basic or alkaline scale. So I am kind of hoping that on top of color correction, this also adds a tiny bit of shine back in our hair because that's what happens when you neutralize the hair back to its acidic state. I am assuming it is going to smell like ketchup. That was probably one of the number one most asked thing when I dyed my hair with a beetroot, which is still viral to this day. People asking me whether my hair smelled like beetroot. And thankfully not, but this is gonna be sitting on my hair for considerably longer and I have considerably more hair than I did back then. I am assuming this is gonna smell like ketchup. Do I mind it? No, I kind of don't mind smelling like fast food and ketchup and this smells good. This is my hair at the moment. I do want to do quite an intense before and after just to see what, if any, the hair change ends up being. I am at the moment still pretty skeptical. Like right now, as I'm obviously layering a red base onto a green base, it is instantly correcting. However, the suitability of ketchup as a depositing agent is yet to be discovered. It is a surprisingly fun process, if only because it feels so much like hair dye. Like it feels and looks pretty much like hair dye. The one thing where it's obviously a dead giveaway is that it smells so intensely of a burger joint that I'm both famished and disgusted. I'm aware that I do have quite an intense green pigment in my hair. This part of my hair in particular does have quite a bit of green right here, so I'm not expecting anything to happen, but I'm curious how the ends are going to look, especially after I incubate it for around an hour. Again, you can see color theory immediately playing through because the minute I layer this red onto the green, it immediately turns brown, which is obviously not white, but we know that when you add a color on top of another color, it does darken it, but obviously it completely removes that green tint that my hair has. Now we wait 30 minutes to see just how it processes before I rinse it off and then see what happens. I know it's not going to affect the darker green bands that I have up here, but I am hopeful that it is going to do something to my ends, which I'm very, very, very excited for. But until then, I am going to go pack my biggest order that I've ever received on Stellari. Robin, baby, if you're watching, come, let me prepare your order. Robin ordered these two wigs as well as my premium paddle brush collection but at the moment I'm also giving away a free paddle brush with every single wig so actually Robin's getting five brushes in total I've actually never gotten an order this large before so I had to go out and buy a box large enough to fit everything <laughs> So did ketchup actually manage to tone my green hair? Kinda! So to say that my hair doesn't have any green would be um, a lie. I also kind of feel like that one time Nikki Tutorials did a hair reveal and it was like two fragments of a shade different than her normal one, but hear me out! So the majority of my hair is unfortunately still green. Just because this is quite a dark base, something that even the mighty ketchup cannot penetrate to because this is simply too dark for something so translucent. That being said, on the lightest parts of my hair, there's no hint of green. The ends of my hair are actually surprisingly just straight up 
blonde. So ketchup will not work on hair that is anywhere darker than a medium blonde. But if you do have bleached hair, like properly blonde bleached hair, that was at one point green because of the pool. If you apply it, most likely it will transform it back fully blonde because my ends are blonde. Ho oh, ho! Answer, however, yes, I do smell like ketchup so savagely and rinsing this out is gonna be an experience because you're gonna see bits of tomato flowing out for quite a while. In fact, I'm convinced there's still ketchup in my hair. So it is time to trade out the organic for the synthetic. This is a semi-permanent dye that I'm currently formulating and working on myself. Again, there's a lot of things that I need to test out, but I do want to actually actively try to cancel out the green. And what that means is that most likely we will have to go in with an actual dye that is deep and dark enough and opaque and pigmented enough to cancel out and go deep enough to be able to cover this green, which means that our base is gonna be much darker. I'm gonna mix up a very quick formula of just literally red pigment and white conditioner and apply it all over the green bits of my If my hair can get somewhere this color, I would be super happy. So let's see if we can make that work. 18 Damage Shield Protective Conditioner. That's our white piece. It was literally one drop. Let's see how bright that actually is. Haha, -ha, it just made baby pink. Formulating a very light toner where you don't necessarily want to change your hair color, more like just shift it, it can be a bit daunting to figure out how opaque it needs to be. So I kind of like to paint it onto my hair and then rub it off just to see. Like I already think it's going to be way too light. Yeah, see, if you rub it in and you can still clearly see the color underneath right there, way too light. one tiny little baby pump more so so far i think i used four pumps This is a much better outcome than our first color correction. Here is our result after color correcting the green out of our hair using a very diluted red toner. And once again, with none other but four tiny pumps of a red pigment mixed with a white conditioning base that I applied literally on just the green areas. Obviously, I'm noticing it did turn the more porous, lighter bits of my ends a very, very gentle blush pink, something that I am personally not minding. This is a consequence of using this sort of a technique if you have varying depths or darknesses on your hair. But I am noticing where I had very distinct green that the ketchup could not penetrate is now a beautiful, you guessed it, neutral brown. This, my friends, is color theory in action. I did kind of leave it straight but now I feel like giving it kind of a cuter style just to make it feel a tiny bit more posh. Bieber vibes from this. I don't know if it's the color or the cut. She does rock the long tussled bob so stunningly and I, I, I like it. This video is a really really beautiful representation of how using color effectively does not mean that you're going to have very vivid and colorful hair. In this case we literally just used it to color correct an uglier color 
or perhaps a less attractive color out of our hair and ending up with something that is soft and ultimately looks like it's a very natural and soft color, but the color that we used to get there is actually pretty vivid. Here's why I'm trying to make such an emphasis on how understanding color theory and understanding how colors work will ensure that you're not as scared, especially if you go to a salon or you're trying to pick up a color for your next look, because you know that if used effectively, that color can actually create something pretty expensive looking. I mean, this looks literally, especially over here in this mid-range, like it is permanent color and the shine and the health that I actually have is something that I'm living for so, so, so much. Obviously the ketchup technique was not as effective on my depth up here. It is still an interesting technique to use if you have very light blonde that started out blonde and it accidentally turned marginally green because it did turn it back to a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful blonde, especially on my ends. For the rest of it though, I actually went in with a medium level pink to counteract the greens. And this is the end color that I have. I'm obviously impressed. I do have the money piece over here that I'm like trying to figure out what to do with, but I think I got one of the craziest ideas for how I want to turn this money piece into something super, super cool. So stay tuned for my next video to see what I do. Until then, I'm gonna be enjoying a bit of a natural Stella, which I haven't seen in a while and seeing just how crazy this year actually went with colors. I slid a respite before the last transformation that I have planned for this year, which is the craziest thing I'll ever be doing. Definitely stay tuned for that. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, join the Stellar Fam. I upload brand new transformation videos every single month, tackling some of the most interesting and complex transformations with some of the easiest science hacks out there. Yes, we are merging a tiny bit of creativity with a lot of logic and science. And we're keeping the health of our hair in mind, 100%. There's no damaged hair anywhere on this channel. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll give it a go and I will see you in my next video. Fiddle low, fiddle low, fiddle video. Toodaloo!